you're listening to a special edition of the Just Go Bike podcast. That's AKA Murph. And that's AP. And this is the podcast where we talk about cycling just for the fun of it. With tales from all across the nation, come for the bikes, stay for the fun, and leave with a smile. On this special edition, we are going to provide you with daily tales from the trail as we ride our bikes across the state of Iowa as a part of Ragbri LI. We apologize in advance for any background noise. We'll be live each episode. AP, we did it. We made it. <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, we are coming to you live. Well, at least right now we're live in Burlington at the beautiful Drake. And uh, we are so excited. We have just had the largest post ragbri meal of all time. Oh, my gosh. It was extreme. I almost cried when we saw the food. It's so delicious. It's like Thanksgiving. We're, yeah. we're so stuffed. But So we may get more and more tired as the podcast <laughs> go on, but let's do this. <laughs> yes. So we have finished... All the way to Burlington, we dipped our tires uh, today, so we'll get into day seven. But first, let's finish off because, you know, yesterday we podcasted at lunchtime. Yeah. So we have three more communities to talk about from yesterday. Yeah. So thanks to Visit Fairfield for letting us podcast in their office. That was really awesome. And from there, we rolled on down the road into Brighton. Yes. And I'm so glad that we were able to make it to Brighton because they were fun and they had a lot of cool stuff for us. Um... They told me all about their whoopie pies that they're famous for. I, which is so funny, right? Because I'm like, oh, were whoopie pies made here? And you said... No, they're not. But they became a thing in 1920 when they paved their first road in Brighton. And they were so happy that they had a paved road that they said, whoopee. <laughs> and so they incorporated it into their yearly festival. And if you don't know what a whoopie pie is, it's sort of like a chocolate cake mm -hmm. with a marshmallowy center. So like think of a soft Oreo, a rounded soft Oreo, mm -hmm. and they're extremely good and they will be for sale on Ragbri. So be sure you check those out. Yes, that was a blast there. And from Brighton... Oh, I'm not done with Brighton. Oh, we have more? Oh, I got so much oh, more for okay. Brighton. Okay, all right, let's hear it. Um, they have a meat locker there, and we tried the beef sticks, which mm -hmm. were very good. But they will also have Amish pies and ice cream at Brighton. And as you roll out of town, be sure that you stop and see the Freedom Rock, because it's really cool, yeah, and they're doing is. a fundraiser for the Freedom Rock. And we'll want you to, you know, at least appreciate the rock, if nothing else. Um, it's kind of cool because it has a Teddy Roosevelt excuse me, Teddy Roosevelt theme. And it has almost a comical edge to it, mm. which you don't necessarily always see in a Freedom Rock. So mm -hmm. it's just a little bit different, but still honoring the veterans of Brighton and Iowa. It's still respectful. It's not in an inappropriate way. And it was um, right as we left town. So you, you'll see it. In a nice little park there. So I just wanted to finish off talking about Brighton by mentioning that because it's worth stopping to see. Mm-hmm. And if you, okay, are you done with Brighton? I am now, yep. <laughs> and from here, this is the point in the day where you have to decide, am I ready to do the Karis Loop? Ah, yes. Because I was not. <laughs> this is where it happens. I, I, we ate, I think we ate 17 meals yesterday. Yeah, we ate so well. I just, I love riding centuries. I would totally do it, but I would be, have been so slow because of how much I ate. So I passed yeah. on the century and I went on to Wayland. Yes, and I don't know if our teammates actually listen to our podcast. I hope they do. Well, they better. But I think I want to just make fun of them a little bit because in the morning, we missed out on three miles because of the traffic, and I think we mentioned that. So when we got into Mount Pleasant, they rode in circles around the city square to, <laughs> so that they could get to 100. <laughs> Look, you got to do what you got to do. I know. It is. <laughs> they're in those century and patches. I would do the same thing, but it was just kind of funny because they're like, what are you, why do you keep making laps? And they're like, we have one more mile to go. Yeah, well, congratulations to them for completing the whole hundred. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yep. So anyway, next stop was Wayland. Yeah, Wayland, Iowa has a really cute logo. It is a chicken and a pig on the logo. So definitely check out their Facebook page to learn all about that. Um, when you're there on Ragbri, they're going to be doing a tribute to Tender Tom. And mm. if you remember Tender Tom from Ragbri's past, he was famous for having those giant turkey legs that you could hold and look sort of like a medieval king while you're eating it, or queen. Um, so they're going to be having big chicken legs, and they're also going to have a large dunk tank. Ooh. So it'll be a really fun stop along <laughs> your way. And that's only nine miles from Brighton to Wayland. So that's a very manageable uh, 
uh, section yeah. to get there. So have your dessert first in Brighton, and then go to Wayland and have your lunch with the turkey leg, and then <laughs> you can then you can go on. That's right. Okay, next stop from there is Trenton. Yeah, little Trenton, Iowa. They have a beautiful town square with some cool equipment, but the apple of my eye in Trenton is a food called Beer Rocks. And I hope I'm saying that right. B-I-E-R-O-C-K-S. Hmm. And they're like a little dough, a dough, pocket of dough with, I had one with Made Right contents in it because yep. they're famous for those. I did too. <clears throat> but they also had like a, a pizza beer rock and they had a um, taco, taco beer one, rock yep. and they also had dessert fruit filled ones. And if I could have possibly eaten more at that <laughs> point in the day, then I, I would have had five of those things because I'd never had one before and they were incredible. Yeah. I believe they're Czech inspired. If ah, I recall. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. I believe it. And it was, I mean, it was some of the best food that I've had in any of the stops. I mean, it ranks right up there. The other thing that they had that was really cool were frozen grapes on a stick that were somehow coated in sugar. Oh gosh. Yeah. And they had both red and green grapes. Uh-huh. So I had red. I had green. Yeah. Were yours good? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They, it was like the perfect snack when it's hot out and they're on a stick and they yeah. look cool and you've you still get your sugar. Yeah. It was, oh, it was amazing. And we sat on the slide and ate those frozen grapes and just had the best time <laughs> uh, fueling up before we got into Mount Pleasant. So there we, from there we rolled on into Mount Pleasant and it was a really beautiful ride. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get some, actually some challenging hills on this day of the ride. Um, at the end, it's more of those Eastern Iowa Hills where they're long windy Hills and you get your big sloping downhill, but then you have a sort of a flat area at the bottom and you have to then climb out. Mm -hmm. So prepare yourself for some long climbs again, by this point in the week, you should be able to handle that if you've been riding every day and training as you should. So Mm -hmm. just another reminder to be sure to train on Hills before you come to Ragbri. Yep. And as a reminder, I know you've already listened to yesterday's episode, but it was 85 miles and about 3,100 feet of climb. And I, my opinion, it was the most challenging day as far Uh, as uh, Hills, but not that challenging. No, nothing. still, we did it. Yeah. None of those Hills where you just kind of want to give up halfway through. I, you know, I had a good, I enjoyed all, every minute of it, yep. but I think maybe only more challenging because not steepness, but because you don't necessarily get that run up on the rollers like you do on the Western side of the state. Yeah. Yeah. And so here's a secret about my style of pedaling. Okay. Are you ready? Yeah. This is just between me and you. Okay. Oh. I won't tell anybody. <laughs> is uh, I, on the bike that I am riding for Ragbri, I have, um, there are two sides to the pedal. There's a, a platform side that you don't clip into. And then on the other side, you do clip in. And so a lot of times I will gauge a hill um, if it's going to be super steep and I am going to panic and feel like I might have to get off my bike or mm. walk. I will clip out before I start the hill. And so then I can be on the platform side and not feel like I'm trapped in, oh. my, in my bike. And Today was the only day that I unclipped in preparation for a very steep hill, which we will talk about in a second. Oh, very good. Today was the only day. You so mean day seven. Day seven. Yes. To, yeah. Yes. Day seven. Yeah. So if that's if that can give you, the listener, any indication, you know, I never felt like I was going to be going slow enough that I would <laughs> fall over on my bike clipped yeah. in. Yeah. I like, I don't have a secret, but my hill riding style is if we're on a really steep, long hill, I will look at the ground and look at the cracks and pretend I'm pulling myself up to each crack just to like sort of have a milestone and a a way to sort of see how, track my progress without looking at the top of the hill and feeling defeated. Yeah. But I never had to do that this rag, Brian. I feel like there were no grinder hills where you're just climbing and climbing and climbing and climbing. They all went pretty quickly for me. Yes, and almost all of them you could celebrate with a downhill. Yeah, exactly. So, so perfect. From there, we rolled into Mount Pleasant and it, I was saying this morning that we should have called it Mount Terrific because (laughs) it was better than Pleasant. (laughs) It was really awesome. Um, As soon as we came into town, they had a little surprise for us. Actually a huge surprise. It was a huge surprise, which was a brand new fire truck, a ladder truck with the ladder extended and an American flag over the square. So we had a fantastic photo op and they let, someone climb up the ladder and that someone was you that's right yeah and it looked scary it was very scary I only stood on the first step and don't ask them to do that because they will not let you it was dangerous (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> but it was a really, really, really cool opportunity, and they will have a photo op um, with fire trucks from the ground mm-hmm. um, as a fundraiser, and they'll also have some challenge coins for sale. So um, go and check them out. They are, the fire station is immediately on the square, so mm-hmm. you should be able to find it. Yeah, I love the square in Mount Pleasant. Yeah, Mount Pleasant was just fun. We had such a warm welcome, and obviously also on the square they have their um, – tractor steam engine so it's a cool photo op of that as well Mm -hmm. so stop by there stop by to have some fun in mount pleasant um, and just enjoy which is exactly what we did yes okay so should we go on to day seven which is what we just completed yeah let's talk about what we did today oh my gosh so today was an interesting day because you know mount pleasant to burlington literally only had two pass-through towns that's right so and and typically on this day people are you know maybe not ready to be done with rag bri, but you're at that point where you're like, all right, I want to dip my tire in the river and then I've got to get back to real life. Yeah. Yeah. And I would recommend stopping in the towns. The mileage is 46.5 miles, yep. but there's only 1,016 feet of climb. Yeah. So actually there were really no hills until we got to Burlington itself in my memory. Yeah, you're right. So it was a nice roll. Um, we did have some headwinds to deal with, but mm-hmm. you know, who knows what'll happen on Rag Bride. It'll probably be the opposite. Yeah. But it was a beautiful ride out of Mount Pleasant. It was so beautiful. And there is one optional gravel route, which, which is um, quite long. It's 14.9 miles with 306 feet of climb. So um, the gravel gang today said it was the most challenging of all oh, gravel yeah. um, because of the quality of the gravel. It was really th- thick chunky I don't know the right words but yeah they kept talking about sliding around a little bit yeah sliding yeah. around and they were glad they had bigger tires so if you love gravel this will be your day if you are dabbling with gravel maybe try it earlier in the week yeah I think that sounds good um, for us we stopped everyone stopped in Minneapolis to start with which is the pastor town that's going to have the most going on as far as I'm aware of although both Minneapolis and Kingston will have stuff for you but in Minneapolis they're going to have all sorts of vendors they're going to have all sorts of fun things for you but they're also going to have a scavenger hunt where you can travel around the town and i said now people are not going to want to get off route too far and the town representative said ma'am our town is only five blocks wide (laughs) so (laughs) people will be able to find it and they'll be able to win all sorts of cool swag and stay tuned for more check out their facebook page they'll be posting information on that yep and while you were talking to the townspeople about scavenger hunts i was at the bar Oh, <laughs> and it was called Bulldogs. Uh, they just opened up in March. Beautiful, beautiful space. Like the bar itself is huge wood. I mean, the whole place is amazing. And uh, so we talked to the owners for quite a while about what to expect when people come through. So if you uh, like to drink vodka lemonades or any, you know, screwdrivers in the morning, that's your place because we told them to be ready. Well, this isn't exactly along those lines, but you may also be pre- need to be prepared for some pyrotechnic, pyrotechnics in Ooh, Minneapolis. Okay, all right. So they have a little bit of a blast plan for us. I mean, not in a bad way. It's going to be really awesome, it sounds <laughs> like. I don't want to give away their secret, but I would be prepared okay. for some sparks. And if you don't, if you're not the kind of person that wants a Bloody Mary or a vodka drink at 8 o'clock in the morning, mm. uh, right next door is Jilly's, which is a coffee shop that... I think everybody that went in there was uh, overwhelmingly, it was awesome. Oh, yeah. I had the best ham and cheese croissant and some awesome coffee. Uh, Stay tuned to hear more about Jilly's. Yes, yes. Okay. And from there, Kingston. Yeah. And I just want to say along that route, again, the route was really pretty. It was nice and flat. It was more like a river bottom sort of vibe where there were trees and it was very flat and it was really a lot of historic looking buildings. But we saw a a American flag themed trailer that was just a storage area. But when we rode past that, we got dive bombed by a bald eagle. It was so cool. It was so cool. (laughs) I've never felt so American. They are so huge. Yes. Because I think we yelled America as we saw the... (laughs) We sure did. (laughs) And then we saw the eagle. We're like, oh my gosh. (laughs) Yeah. So I don't know if you'll experience that or not, but there are a lot of bald eagles along the Mississippi River these days. Mm -hmm. So it was really, really neat to have that and on into Kingston. Yep. Yep. Um, And, you know, we didn't say this, but it it is 23.5 miles from the start of day seven to the first town of Minneapolis. Mm. Um, But we talked to Matt Fippen, the director, and he said there will be vendors along the way. Yeah. So it's not I mean, if you're not comfortable doing 23.5 miles all at one time, you'll definitely have opportunities for breaks. Yeah. 
I'm someone who's comfortable doing 23.5 miles all at once, but I got hungry. Yeah. So I would have, if there was a vendor, I would have stopped. Yeah. Because I'm used to eating pretty constantly by this point in the ride. Yep. So I did also eat in Kingston. We had a nice little stack, snack stop. And I would recommend stopping there because you don't want to go to Burlington hungry because there's going to be all sorts of stuff to do there. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so then we rolled into Burlington and we had our hill of the day. You want to kick that part off? We all biked up Snake Alley, Snake which Alley. if you don't know what Snake Alley is, it's one of the steepest climbs. I don't know if in the world, but definitely in the United States. Well, they claim it's the steepest road in the world. Oh, geez, yeah. really? It's And it is snake shaped because you can't just ride straight up a, a hill like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I think there's like maybe six curves. Uh, there's quite a like few switch curves, backs. switchback curves that you and it's made out of brick, paved with brick. Yep. And it's really fun. Yes. Yeah. A hundred percent glad that I did it. And you know, your legs aren't tired from doing hills all day. So you got the juice. You might as well. Yeah. And then you get the picture at the top of the hill and you can say you did a Ripley's Believe It or Not Hill. That's right. And I, um, I don't know if Scott Sumter from Bike Iowa will be actually putting this film on social media, but he caught me as I got to the very top of the hill and he was trying to like interview me and I, I think he was trying to be funny, but I couldn't breathe. And uh, so he kept coming at me like, what? You're not going to tell me? Tell me what you thought of Snake Alley. I'm like, get out of my face. But eventually he uh, stopped filming. So, <laughs> Well, I got a cute picture of you climbing. You look very strong. So okay, I'll good, post good, that good. One. Yeah. But that is the only time this entire week that I stayed clipped out of my clips um, in case I needed to stop, which I did not, but... It's a really, really cool experience. I think that is wise because it is steep and it is windy and it is, like I said, brick paved. But if you have to stop in the middle of that, you're probably toast. Yeah, you're not going to be able to use your momentum to get up. You're right. You're right. So after that triumph, we rolled downhill to the Mississippi River. The mighty Mississippi. Yeah. And the river is kind of up right now. So I'm assuming by the time Ragbrag comes through, that will not be the case. But um yeah, it was sloshed around on our shoes while we dipped our <laughs> tires and uh, took our group photo. Yeah, I know uh, it's such a great feeling to come to the Mississippi River. It's such an awesome dip site. If you've dipped in Burlington before, you may remember this dip site. Um, it's just a great place to stop and celebrate your ride across the state. Mm-hmm. Um, before we close out our talk for today, do you want to? Do you have any thoughts about the ride? What did you think about the overall ride? I absolutely loved it. I um, definitely was a little nervous going into the week based on the fact that it's the hilliest rag bri ever. But I just didn't, I, every day I was, I was, went to bed thinking I did just fine. Yeah, absolutely. So I didn't need to be worried. I mean, I did train, but I I didn't need to be as worried as I was. Yeah. With proper training, I don't think anyone should be worried. Um, I think this rag bri is has a lot of beauty it's Mm -hmm. a gorgeous route and for those of you who have done ragbri before you'll be treated to what i would consider a classic looking ragbri with the beautiful hills and the countryside and the scenery so i just i want i encourage you to come and join us on this ride it's going to be awesome we still have day passes available if you haven't signed up yet so make sure you do that um my trusty shimano sandals served me throughout the ride which i really loved I haven't had Shimano sandals for a couple of years now since I stopped making them and brought them back. Yeah. And um, it was just nostalgic from start to finish for me. It was just awesome. I loved it. Yeah. Um, well, we hope that you enjoyed uh, having these daily podcast episodes. And of course, we're bringing back the coffee shops of Ragbri. So yeah. that will be on as we get closer to actual Ragbri. And then, of course, the deep dive with every overnight town where we interview the actual um, committees yeah so they will have firsthand you know we'll talk about the entertainment we'll talk about you know what they have in store for us specifically maybe we'll learn more about the pyrotechnics yeah maybe maybe (laughs) well i think it's time for my traditional nap in the car on the way home from ragbri and i can't wait to start bringing you more content about ragbri 51 as in the weeks to come Awesome. Well, thanks listeners for tuning in uh, every day. Yeah. Thanks everybody for listening. Uh, It's been a delight to bring you the sights and sounds of, or I guess mostly the sounds of (laughs) Ragbri 51. Well, listeners, that's it for today. We both want to thank you for tuning in to listen to this special edition of the Just Go Bike podcast. And if you would like to contact us with a comment about the podcast, or maybe you have a topic in mind, you can reach us at 
Just Go Bike on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also find us this year on Ride With GPS. That's right. We'll be live logging the entire route inspection pre-ride with our Wahoo Bike Computers, then sending the data over to Ride With GPS, and you can find us online. Please rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast, especially if you're a fan. All right, that's a wrap, and we'll be back soon. Until then, just go bike! Bike!